Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. After a long, rambling autobiographical prologue that gives a vague history of some of the characters, Jailbird tells the story of Walter F. Starbuck, who just got out of jail for a small part in the Watergate conspiracy. In his first two days of freedom, Starbuck goes to New York City and runs into two people from his past, Leland Clues, whose life he accidentally ruined in the 1940s by saying that Clues was a former communist, and Mary Kathleen Olooney, who is now a bag lady but was his lover and co-worker when he was a communist in the 1930s. Starbuck's story is full of flashbacks, and by the time he meets Clues and Mary Kathleen, he has told them a bit of a jumbled version of his whole life. Alexander Hamilton McCone, the stuttering recluse boss of Starbucks' parents, sends him to Harvard. Starbucks' parents came to America from Europe. Since he saw his father's striking factory workers killed, McCone has stayed away from the rest of the world. McCone wants Starbuck to become a gentleman, but when Starbuck is in college, he joins a union, becomes the editor of the Bay State Progressive, and falls in love with Mary Kathleen Olooney. Starbuck stops being a radical in the 1940s and starts working in a series of bureaucratic government jobs. In 1949, in response to a question from Congressman Richard M. Nixon, he tells a congressional committee that Leland Clues was once a communist. This hurts Clues, who had never been linked to communism in public before. A few years later, because of this betrayal, no one will hire Starbuck, and his wife has to support him. Nixon, on the other hand, makes Starbuck his special advisor on youth affairs when he becomes president. This is a completely pointless job. Starbuck, on the other hand, lets a trunk full of cash be hidden in his office at the White House. This makes him a Watergate conspirator. Even though he went to Harvard, Starbuck feels like his life has been a waste. He is afraid that when he gets out of prison, he will be a bum who can't find work. But Mary Kathleen, with her huge basketball shoes and six shopping bags, turns out to be Mrs. Jack Graham, the reclusive majority stockholder of RAMJAC, the largest and most powerful conglomerate in the Western world. Mary Kathleen runs the business by sending instructions to the people who work for her that are signed with her fingerprints. She hides on the streets of New York in her disguise because she thinks someone is trying to kill her and cut off her hands so they can take over RAMJAC. Finding Starbuck again and hearing about his life shows her that there are still kind people in the world. She makes plans for Starbuck and all the nice people who helped him during his two days of freedom to become vice president of RAMJAC, but then she gets hit by a taxi. When Starbuck finds her dead, he finally finds out who she really is. He hides her will, which gives RAMJAC to the American people, and for two years works in the entertainment business as a wealthy and powerful businessman. At the end of the book, though, he is about to go back to jail for hiding a will against the law. The different parts of RAMJAC are being sold, and the federal government will get the money from the sales. Thank you for listening to our book summary, I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.